grew up on this campus with both of my parents serving on the faculty here. I completed my bachelor's and master's degrees here. And after about 10 years in the corporate world, I came back home to NIU full-time in 2011 and have had the privilege of working with students in career development and internships with roles in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and most recently serving as director of the awesome team in career services. My new role in HR is to support and enhance the overall experience for every NIU employee, as well as assisting in the grievance process for non-represented faculty and staff. More specifically, I will spend time looking at things we are doing well and working to do more of those things, as well as assessing things that are not working as well as they should be and trying to help provide solutions for some of those areas. I look forward to working with all of you in this new capacity and I welcome your engagement as feedback and input from each of you is what will help make this new role a success. Thank you in advance for your engagement and candor in this process as sharing more about how we can all allow for the best possible experience for all of our employees. Today, we'll have the reading of our land acknowledgement. The president will provide her formal address. And then the president and I will have the opportunity to have a conversation with some questions I have for her, along with questions we field from the audience. Here now with our land acknowledgement is senior, senior psychology major and president of the Student Government Association, Raif Majid. Good afternoon. I will now be reading the land acknowledgement. The four locations of Northern Illinois University in DeKalb, Naperville, Rockford, and Oregon occupy the traditional homelands of the Anishinaabe peoples. Niswe Mishkodewinan, also known as the Council of Three Fires, comprised of the Potawatomi, Ojibwe, and Odawu. Other indigenous people who call this land home include the Sac and Fox, Kickapoo, Peoria, Miami, and Sioux. And I use occupation of this land as a result of ethnic cleansing and forced relocation of Native Americans, in part through the Treaty of St. Louis and the Second Treaty of Prairie du Chien. We acknowledge the presence and continued vitality of these and other Native communities in our state and Midwest region, as well as throughout the US and Canada. Today, the sovereign indigenous nations who were forcibly removed from Illinois are located in Iowa, Kansas, Oklahoma, Michigan, and Wisconsin, among other states. Moreover, one of the largest communities of Native Americans in the Midwest is in the Chicago area. As an academic institution, Northern Illinois University has a responsibility to acknowledge and redress this colonial legacy. To that end, NIU will educate our students, staff, faculty, and visitors, as well as the surrounding community about this history. Furthermore, as part of NIU's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, we seek to build respectful and authentic relationships with Native students, faculty, staff, and local and relocated Native communities by promoting student access and success, academic research and artistry, and community outreach and engagement. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. It is now my pleasure to introduce NIU's president, Dr. Lisa C. Freeman, for her formal address. Good afternoon, Huskies. Yeah, all right. Thank you for gathering here in person today or for viewing remotely. Every year, I look forward to the State of the University Address. It provides opportunities to celebrate our accomplishments, share what we have to look forward to, and importantly, express my gratitude to students, faculty, and staff. The return to a more traditional, fully in-person fall semester has been a welcomed experience. We are together again in classrooms and labs, filling the student center with fun and activities, marveling at our performers and artists and cheering on our athletes. 
Together, we are empowering shared governance, brainstorming ideas and solutions, and participating in events that celebrate what it means to be a Husky. We are at our very best and strongest when we are together. Strongest together also reflects who we are and what we value. It shows in how we champion our students and in the ways we come together to innovate and tackle challenges. Huskies know they are not alone. This past year, we were more intentional bringing people together and tapping into the diverse talents, expertise, and viewpoints of our community to create solutions and reach our goals. Through this shared leadership approach, we are more effective and impactful in areas such as student recruitment and retention, revenue generation, and process improvement. Our efforts are yielding results. And I'll highlight just a few examples of what we've achieved together. We saw, again, year-over-year -year growth in our incoming freshman class with 2,400 new first-year students who are diverse and accomplished. More than half of NIU undergraduates now are first generation, and our university currently ranks second among Illinois public universities for social mobility, according to US News and World Report. We saw remarkable student engagement at the start of the fall semester. With a more robust and cohesive move-in and welcome experience, students demonstrated extraordinary eagerness to meet others, form connections, get involved, learn about resources, and become successful. And we are working hard to make sure our students can be successful by providing a more immediate and holistic response to Huskies in need. Since the beginning of the year, academic affairs and student affairs together have proactively reached out to offer assistance to more than 900 students they found to be struggling. Struggling in their coursework or with mental health issues, finances, or food or housing insecurity. Our alumni and donor communities are also highly committed to supporting our students. This past year, philanthropy exceeded expectations with over $23 million raised by the NIU Foundation. Most important, as a result of the continued emphasis on student need, $13.4 million was raised specifically for scholarships the highest annual total for scholarships ever achieved. I am also incredibly proud of the emphasis that we've placed on helping all Huskies feel that they belong here at NIU. This commitment resonates beyond the university community with national organizations continuing to recognize our efforts. This year, NIU received a second Higher Education Excellence in Diversity Award. Recognition as one of the nation's best of the best colleges and universities for LGBTQ plus students. And again, made the list of great colleges to work for based on our employees feedback about strength in shared governance and diversity, inclusion and belonging. In that context, cross-sectional teams have developed meaningful and actionable recommendations for how we can improve or enhance NIU. Addressing important areas, such as student recruitment, retention, and success, transdisciplinary scholarship and curricular innovation, Greek life revitalization, multi-year planning and budgets, and more. I am particularly impressed with the recommendations from the members of the budget and planning work group and their recognition that development of sustainable multi-year budgets will require us to consciously establish and fund priorities, continue to invest in equitable student success, and increase incentives for innovation. They envision our university community rallying together to make strategic choices necessary to guarantee NIU's future. I support their vision, which was developed after significant consultation with campus stakeholders. And accordingly, many of the work group's suggestions have been incorporated into the university goals. 
These few examples can't fully capture the scope of what we have accomplished together. There's a lot to be proud of and we are still moving forward. Our university goals for the coming year build on this work and will yield even greater results. Today, I want to focus specifically on what we're doing to foster shared leadership, student success, and innovation. Our efforts are tied to specific university goals, and they also are intrinsically linked together and essential for our future. We know from experience that taking a shared leadership approach to problem solving innovation and change delivers results tangible and significant results. Shared leadership empowers cross-functional teams to use their expertise to strategize, develop actionable solutions, and garner buy-in from key decision makers and the university community. Achieving these outcomes requires abundant organizational readiness and capacity. So we are investing time and resources into more on the job learning experiences, networking opportunities, and purposeful professional development for our faculty and staff. Let me give you three examples. First, our Emerging Leaders Program, led by Alicia Shadaman, Director of the Center for Nonprofit and NGO Studies and Vice Provost for Faculty Affairs, Chad McAvoy, launched last year. It's an intensive professional development experience for faculty seeking to expand their capacity for leadership in higher education. 11 faculty participated in regular cohort meetings, assigned readings and panel discussions with feedback and mentorship provided throughout. A new cohort, cohort began this year with 10 members representing all seven colleges. This fall, we launched the Staff Leadership Development Academy led by Chief of Staff Matt Streb and our first President's Office fellow, Michaela Holtz. Open to all full-time non-academic civil service and SPS employees, this program focuses on professional growth and leadership skill enhancement. It exposes participants to multiple facets of the university to enhance their knowledge and understanding of institutional goal setting, campus operations, shared governance, and the current higher education landscape. 16 participants from a variety of campus departments, including the Disability Resource Center, Home Student Center, Honors, Laredo Taft, and Public Safety, now meet regularly with an appointed mentor from NIU's leadership team. Through these programs, faculty and staff participants are empowered to apply their knowledge and perspectives to their daily work and to share their insights and experiences with colleagues. I encourage all interested employees to apply for next year's programs. Recently, I asked a cross-functional group of staff to recommend additional strategies that senior leadership could implement to enhance NIU's organizational capacity for shared leadership. They began by offering a framework that's centered on three essentials of shared leadership, innovation and risk-taking, commitment of time and resources, transparency and accountability. Additionally, they highlighted the importance of institutional leaders, unit leaders, and individual Huskies promoting and supporting these cultural attributes. Collaboration was envisioned as a crucial moving arm driving collective progress. Culture was central to their model, emphasizing that continuously nurturing our beliefs, values, and attitudes is key to ensuring that shared leadership endures in NIU's mission, vision, and values. To achieve these outcomes, the team recommended committing additional financial and human resources to support staff professional development. They advocated specifically for individualized employee development and engagement plans, as well as enhanced training for supervisors. Their input will be used to develop and implement a series of professional development opportunities for staff designed to heighten individual and team performance, foster collaboration, and improve accountability. 
Phase one will be implemented by July 1st, 2023. Now consider this. If shared leadership is how we do things, student success is why. Let me share a few points of pride about our students. Our student body is becoming more and more diverse, reflecting our region and our commitment to access and affordability. The average high school grade point average of the fall 2022 freshman class is 3.42, the highest for new freshmen on record. Nearly 4,000 students live on our campus, 10% more than last year and the most since 2015. Just under 1,000 international students left homes and families in 76 different countries to come here and learn with us. Our students are excited to be here and get involved. In fact, we saw significant participation in programming at the start of the semester, including more than 1,300 students attending the student involvement fairs. Our Huskies are forging brand new paths for themselves, their families, and their communities. This takes incredible courage and determination. It also requires intentional caring employees who surround our students with resources, reassurance, and opportunities to help them persevere. We had this in mind when George Middlemist was hired as our new Vice President for Administration and Finance to start in January. George brings 25 years of experience to campus from MSU Denver, a university that leads Colorado in the number of first-generation students, Pell-eligible students, and students of color. You can imagine it would not be easy to leave a place where you've been so invested, but George was absolutely drawn to NIU because of our students and our deep commitment to access and affordability. And as a new employee, he'll be in good company, given that we recently welcomed Dr. Clint Michael Renault to NIU as our new vice president for student affairs. His passion for students is palpable. You've likely seen him at multiple events and activities in person and on social media. Clint Michael and his team are collaborating with students to find more meaningful ways to support their success. Together, they're reimagining what engagement looks like and creating a community of care. One new initiative is a twice monthly dinner series called Conversations That Matter, where students are invited to share a meal and their voice in conversation with senior leaders. Opportunities like this build connectivity, let students know we're here for them and give us another way to learn about our students and how we can support them. And that is our greatest responsibility, to do everything we can to help our students achieve the goals and aspirations that brought them to NIU. Today, more forces than ever are pulling our students' focus away from excelling academically and completing their degrees. Significant stressors like financial struggles, family obligations, and mental health challenges. Student success needs to be at the forefront of our minds when we make decisions. Each of us can positively influence the lives of our Husky students if we intentionally prioritize their interests, needs, and challenges. Earlier this month, I was on a panel during the Association of Public and Land-Grant Universities National Meeting. We discussed adding value to public university education by advising and supporting our students to successful outcomes, not only while they're on our campuses, but also as they launch and develop their careers. I was proud to share that Braven is, or that NIU is already doing this through the efforts of Career Services and our partner, Braven. Braven is a Chicago-based nonprofit organization that empowers students with the skills, networks, experience, and confidence to land strong internships and jobs. This fall, we launched a three-credit elective course called UNIV 301 Braven Leadership and Career Accelerator. It's taught by leadership coaches working in a variety of industries, 
Students are grouped in small cohorts with the same leadership coach throughout the semester to focus on career exploration and preparation, developing a professional portfolio, and getting hands-on opportunities to help clients develop solutions. Upon course completion, students are provided with additional long-term supports, such as mentors within the Braven Network to help them stand out after graduation. The challenges faced by our undergraduate students are magnified for our graduate and professional students, especially those from other countries. They face unique dynamics as they work towards advanced degrees, oftentimes feeling isolated while balancing significant demands related to immigration requirements, employer expectations, and family obligations. Academic affairs, the colleges, and the graduate school are committed to collaborating and to really engaging with our graduate students to make certain that the programs, resources, and experiences we offer meet their current and their long-term needs. Accordingly, Provost Ingram and Graduate School Dean Wilkes have recently completed an assessment of our graduate student programs and experiences. They identified actionable recommendations that reflect four major themes. Creating a graduate student community that supports success, setting expectations for graduate student stipends and mandatory fees, aligning tuition waivers to support graduate student success, and ensuring adequate resources for strong and strategic programs. Programs that enhance the reputation of our university and propel our graduate students to productive, fulfilling lives and careers. From college prospect to college graduate, we are responsible at all stages for helping undergraduate and graduate students achieve their dreams. Our strategic enrollment plan 2.0 maps out strategies for improving access, affordability, and persistence to graduation, as well as for re-enrolling students who stop out and assisting working results, working adults interested in upskilling for advancement. We must all be involved in exploring more tailored approaches to recruiting and retaining students, closing equity gaps, embracing accountability, and driving progress. And our endeavors have never been more important to our state or nation. There's a growing need for an educated and skilled workforce to serve our region while the pipeline of college age students continues to shrink. Across our country, the gap between the affluent and underserved continues to grow, increasing divisions among us. Our university can make a difference as a creator of opportunity, producer of talent, convener of thought leaders, and generator of ideas. And that brings us to our third area of focus today, innovation. Increasingly, contemporary issues demand that artists, scientists, and humanists innovate together to bring new ideas and solutions to light. In this context, NIU needs to prepare students and scholars to build on their disciplinary foundations by broadening their thinking, being open to integrating additional concepts, theories, and methods, and accepting as legitimate work that crosses disciplinary boundaries is collaborative or solutions focused. To help do this, we'll establish an enterprise level unit reporting to the Vice President for Research and Innovation Partnerships. This office will consolidate and strengthen NIU resources available to facilitate transdisciplinary work and support cross university and multi institutional proposals and awards. Additionally, our provost, deans, and college curricular committees will be encouraged to dismantle administrative barriers to curricular experimentation and development of transdisciplinary courses and programs. My expectation is that they will move forward recommendations from faculty task forces and shared governance groups in order to create needed change. We are in a period when the value of higher education is being questioned. It's critical that we sustain excellence. 
And this means changing our systems to align with diverse and evolving forms of scholarship. It also means crediting appropriately the accomplishments of those who work, whose work has relevance and impact outside traditional academic boundaries. We must value and reward the work of scholars who seek to blur disciplinary boundaries in their teaching and learning. Scholars who are publicly engaged, scholars who support mission-driven work around DEI, and scholars who are innovators and entrepreneurs creating new technologies. We need to recruit such scholars to join colleagues at NIU already doing this work and recognize their accomplishments. I want to recognize and acknowledge the tremendous work of the NIU faculty and staff responsible for our university's continued growth in external funding. Annual non-COVID-19 related sponsored funding has grown by almost 40% in the last five years and 11% since last year to more than $42 million. External funding is supporting countless impressive faculty efforts across campus. And many of those use transdisciplinary approaches to tackle complex problems. How to train effective, engaging science and art educators. How lifestyle, environmental, and sociodemographic factors influence cancer mortality risk. And how to make sure infants and children flourish despite facing adversity. These scholarly activities and many others create learning opportunities for our students while our region and world reap the benefits. There is no shortage of challenges, however, and one of the greatest is how to respond to our changing climate and environment. Polar explorer and environmentalist Robert Swan has stated, the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. There is a pressing need for leadership, expertise, and efforts focused on sustainability and climate science. And NIU has enviable capacity in both areas. Toward that end, our state has begun the design build phase of the $23 million Northern Illinois Center for Community Sustainability. NICS, as it's known for short, will strengthen and intensify sustainability research. Part of the Illinois Innovation Network, the center will work to improve water resources, predict and manage environmental change, and stimulate innovation in food systems. It will build upon momentum created by our Institute for the Study of the Environment, Sustainability, and Energy. And while Nick's groundbreaking is still down the road, NIU sustainability research is already thriving in areas such as groundwater impacts of prairie restoration, electrochemical technologies for water treatment, conversion of trash into usable products, and development of robotic technologies for crop production. Nix, along with the planned state-of-the-art Health Informatics Technology Center, will be major West Campus anchors. I'm also thrilled that in the coming year, we will welcome to campus the Central Midwest Water Science Center of the U.S. Geological Survey. This USGS center will locate in renovated space previously occupied by the NIU print shop. Importantly, all three of these West Campus developments promise to create additional transdisciplinary research opportunities for faculty and staff and exciting hands-on learning experiences for students. NIU must lead by example in sustainability areas beyond research performance. And we're making good progress as evidenced by completion of a greenhouse gas inventory and other baseline sustainability assessments. These will inform an organized planning process led by our sustainability coordinator, Courtney Gallagher, and a recently appointed sustainability and climate action planning task force. That group will work collaboratively with campus leaders to establish concrete goals for a more sustainable NIU in areas such as transportation, food production, renewable energy, buildings, grounds, recycling and waste management, and more. 
Specifically, the task force will outline our climate action planning process and set a target for our campus to reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 or earlier. A draft plan is expected this coming spring, we're hoping by Earth Day. And when available, the plan will be presented for public comment. I'm really excited about this initiative. Sustainability aligns perfectly with our mission and encompasses DEI initiatives through environmental justice. It's also the best choice from a long-term operational standpoint. It makes financial sense. But most exciting is that our students will be central to the effort. As our campus is transformed into a living laboratory on sustainability, they will be provided with a multitude of hands-on learning experiences and opportunities for climate action. My hope is that you see the important linkages between shared leadership, student success, and innovation, and that you can see where you can be involved and have a voice. We will continue to lean in on these areas and we will do more to share and celebrate the accomplishments and Husky contributions. For our faculty, we have an array of university level honors for those who excel at various aspects of our mission. We'd like to do the same for staff and are expanding our staff awards program. We have revised the criteria, simplified the nomination process, created seven new award categories and tripled the funding to be more inclusive and reflective of how every staff member can make a meaningful contribution. Among the new annual awards, the staff award for student impact will recognize up to two NIU staff members who go above and beyond their normal job responsibilities to positively impact the quality of student life or student experience. This includes staff from all divisions and job types who exhibit excellence and impact students in a positive way. The Rising Husky Award will recognize up to two staff members who, while new to NIU, demonstrate excellence, innovation, and performance that has a significant impact at NIU in a short period of time. The Presidential Award for Creativity and Innovation will recognize one group or team for proposing and or implementing new or improved processes, methods, systems, or services, while also encouraging reasonable calculated risk-taking among their colleagues and or teams. I appreciate the opportunity to address our community today. We have achieved so much throughout the past year. Indeed, our faculty and staff have accomplished so much during difficult times that have included the pandemic and its ripple effects. That's why earlier this year, when we recognized that inflation presented hardships for many, we supplemented the earnings of eligible employees and graduate students with a one-time bonus to demonstrate appreciation for your commitment, resiliency, and continued success. Husky Nation is home to outstanding students, dedicated employees, and generous supporters. Together, we raise up people, ideas, and opportunities. Thank you to our students for your inspiration and faith in us. Thank you to faculty and staff for changing lives and improving our world. And as always, go Huskies. And I look forward to taking your questions.
Thank you for sharing those remarks with us, President Freeman. It's always great to hear about the successes that we've had as an institution, along with a vision for what's ahead. While members of the audience here in the auditorium, as well as online, think of questions they might have for you, I'll go ahead and get the conversation started for us. So in your remarks, you provided an update about our partnership with Braven that we launched this fall. And Braven also recently received an $11 million grant from philanthropist Mackenzie Scott. How did we come to partner with Braven and how do you envision them helping our students? I was fortunate enough to participate both in creating Thriving Illinois, the strategic plan for higher education in Illinois and serving on the equity working group for black student success in Illinois, a working group that was formed in the aftermath of the tragic murder of George Floyd. And some of the data that we saw as part of those efforts showed that the equity gaps we work so hard to fight, equity gaps in completion rates, um, equity gaps in student success actually persist post-graduation. And when that happens, the impact is lifelong on individuals and families and communities and just contributes to that wealth gap that divides us. And so I really believe that the ability of Braven to tackle this program, this problem at scale and, and to provide students who have great talent and ambition with the social capital that they're lacking just because they're the first in their families to go to college or they come from low income households or, or marginalized community, helping those students who are our students have that edge, have a level playing field as they seek their first jobs and the jobs thereafter, having that professional network of mentors, it, it can make a tremendous difference. Yeah, absolutely. And actually tonight and tomorrow night, uh, students will be presenting their capstone projects as a part of the Braven UNIV 301 course. Um, they're actually working on designing ideas for uh, generating more interest for the Chicago Bulls uh, for the game that they're playing in Paris against the Detroit Pistons in January. So, and for any students listening, uh, there are still seats available for the spring semester of UNIV 301. Um, as you noted, we know from the Great Colleges to Workforce survey that um, our employees see strength in our shared governance system, and shared governance certainly contributes to overall shared leadership. Do you have any suggestions for how a newer faculty or staff member could take an initial step towards shared governance involvement? Well, let me first say that, you know, on some campuses, shared governance is very distinct from shared leadership. And shared governance is all about elected office and representation in a formal structure. And shared leadership is about people bringing what they know to the table to help move the university forward. But at NIU in the 12 years that I've been here, shared governance and shared leadership have both been about Huskies getting involved and using the things they know to make this a better place for our students and, and for themselves. All of our shared governance groups have websites. They post their meeting times, minutes, and agendas. Our shared leadership groups, like the presidential commissions, um, have public events that are open to everyone with speakers and lunch, but they're also very friendly about talking to folks who may want to get involved. This is a very, very friendly university. And, and I would just encourage people to find someone who's involved in the activity that intrigues them and say, hey, can we have coffee? Uh, can you tell me what it was like? How did you get involved? Can I sit in on a meeting? And um, the more, the merrier. And you know, just as we talk about how important it is for our students to connect and belong, to have a really great Husky experience, the same is true for our employees. Our happiest employees are the ones who have connections with the people they work with and with the institution. Absolutely. The last couple of years has seen a lot of impressive uh, business and research development within DeKalb County. Um, Ferrara Candy Company, Amazon, Meta, and Syngenta, just to name a few, have all recently come to build in the DeKalb area. Can you share a bit more about how NIU contributes to getting such impressive new partners interested in DeKalb? Absolutely, and, and this gives me a moment to call out the president of the DeKalb mayor, Cohen Barnes, who's with us here today. Um, 
in, in the history of the university, and I mean that, I don't think there has ever been a closer relationship between the mayor of DeKalb and the president of NIU. And this is a very business-friendly DeKalb administration. And the mayor and I serve together with colleagues from across DeKalb County on the DeKalb County Economic Development Corporation. And so NIU has a seat at the table. And NIU is on the other end of the phone when a company like a Ferrar or an Amazon or a Syngenta is thinking about where to locate, we have an opportunity to submit materials to tell them about the educational experiences we can offer their early career employees and their um, senior employees. We can talk about what an asset our students are and are, you know, to, to providing an educated and skilled workforce for any company that wants to come here. And you know, through those conversations and the seat at the table, I think we've really also turned our thinking to saying, it's not just important to attract industry here, it's important to create a community where the students who attend NIU wanna stay and live and start businesses and raise families. And we've been working together, the mayor and I and a number of colleagues for a couple of years on something called Opportunity Unbound, which highlights all the things that make DeKalb County a great place to live and work and play. And so I, I'm really proud of the way our university connects to the region and the way we're trying to make our students, faculty and staff feel they belong in DeKalb and DeKalb County. Yeah, it's definitely been great to see and in career services, we uh, get, you know, to be a part of those conversations often as well and discuss the extent to which those internship and job opportunities while they're here in school and then also after they graduate make such a huge impact. So. I also want to give a shout out while I have the microphone to the Ignite program. Um, that has been a terrific program for our community. Um, it's hosted in the College of Business. Uh, local businesses and nonprofits compete for NIU students. Um, those students get real world experience. Our community is elevated as a result of their contributions to the organizations they serve. And uh, I'm, it's something we're looking to expand. I've obviously got plenty of questions I can keep asking you, but I do want to take an opportunity to see if uh, there are folks here in the audience in the room who would like to ask any questions. All right, Liz, do we have any from online? We do. So um, our first question, uh, President Freeman first, is thank you for your continued support and leadership. I didn't say that. If I promise the person online said that. Um, we are very appreciative of your support and leadership. What do you envision will be our greatest challenges in the next few years? And how can we collaborative, collaboratively work to address them? You know, I think that question touches almost perfectly on the three themes I wanted to emphasize in the state of the university. I think the how we face our challenges is absolutely shared leadership, having us come together with our different viewpoints, perspectives and talents to create solutions to the challenges we face. And those challenges are changing demographics. There are, is a diminishing number of new high school graduates that means that we're going to have to compete more effectively for those that still graduate. And, and we will do that because we are doing that. Um, but in addition, there is a lot of opportunity out there to help students who opted out or who uh, stepped out, who some who have no college, some who have some college but no degree, some who may have debt with no degree. Some members of our incumbent workforce, working professionals who can advance only if they get a degree. These are populations that we need to serve to fulfill our public mission. And they're populations we have not yet served um, broadly and effectively, although certainly there are pockets. This is something we can come together and recognize as a real opportunity for the future to execute on our public mission and to continue to grow our enrollment. I think you know, the budget and planning work group also identified clear opportunity and challenge in saying we need to have a structurally sound operating budget. And that means growing revenue, 
It means investing in the things that really, really matter. And as we prioritize saying, maybe there's some things we should stop doing so we can recover or reallocate those resources. I think we can do that. You know, this is a university that's been through some tough times. I was here for the budget impasse. We were almost all of us here for COVID. But I can also tell you, no matter how much money we would we have, we would never have enough for all the stuff that we want to do, because that's what universities are. They're creative people who have big ambitions and they're much, much better. We're all much, much better at starting things than stopping things. So being able to have those conversations as we move forward is a challenge and an opportunity. And again, it's one that I know this community is up for. Thank you. So do we have, I have another question online if we Great. don't have any in the room. Um, uh, Dr. Freeman, thank you for your continued student-centered leadership approach. Phenomenally done. Again, I didn't say that. Um, I am wondering what efforts are being made for NIU to continue to recruit and retain faculty and staff of color or those from underrepresented backgrounds? You know, there are a suite of things that we've been doing for a number of years that are identified as best practices and that have had impact. And those are things like choosing broad publications to advertise our positions, attending career fairs, that attract postdocs and early career faculty from communities of color. We've also got a great mentor, uh, faculty mentor in the provost office and Dr. Janice Hamlet, who's here to help the success of all of our faculty, but particularly faculty of color. We also, uh, you know, have to think about recruiting and retaining faculty into communities where they feel they matter and they're recognized. One of the strategies that we have not yet attempted that's been suggested that actually appears in this year's university goals is the strategy of cluster hiring, of bringing in a cohort of faculty, not necessarily in the same department or the same college, but with some similar interests and the ability to form a community almost instantly upon coming here. Those things are all really important. When you look at our climate surveys, we're doing pretty well. We certainly have an equity lens on many more things on our campus than others do, but there are people who don't feel heard or valued. And for faculty of color, some of that has to do with the way we value and reward their scholarship. And so you'll notice many times in the state of the university, I spoke about the need for us to be broad in our thinking of what represents scholarship. Scholarship is not what scholarship was 10 or 20 years ago. It's evolved. And whether you're a scholar who is working uh, in an area with a lens um, that reflects your identity, whether you're a publicly engaged scholar, whether you're an inventor who's seeking to take a product to market in your lifetime and looking for a patent rather than a paper, our reward systems, our hiring tenure and promotion systems need to accommodate that breadth. And that's why I'm so incredibly proud of our faculty senate, our faculty senate president, Ishmael Montana, our faculty senate social justice committee, the provost and our chief diversity officer, Dr. Ingram and Dr. Edgehill Walden, Dr. Blazy, all of them have been looking at this problem together. I can stand here with a microphone in my hand because I'm the president and I have the bully pulpit. I actually am not the one who can change the faculty senate bylaws or the departmental tenure and promotion bylaws, but I can certainly help garner resources along with the provost, we can challenge. But I'm so proud of what our faculty senate has decided to do on their own about this. They've written it down, they've committed to it. Right now, Dr. Montoya and I are going back and forth on a goal to be inserted into the university goals that specifically addresses this issue. And so um, I think that that's, that's a big one because we can do all the other things. And if we don't address that reward system, 
we won't really be able to recruit and retain faculty of color or faculty with the types of interests that we need to make us to continue to be an excellent institution. Liz, are there other questions from online at all? <laughs> we have another question, President Freeman. Um, when you're in an environment with scarce resources and you're, you're encouraging people to collaborate and to be innovative and in thinking about how we use those resources to meet university goals, um, how can you uh, work with staff who may be more timid in collaboration, thinking that in scarce resource times, they need to keep those resources in their own particular unit and maybe less willing to reach out and do those collaborative things we're asking? You know, I think all of us in leadership have to practice what we preach and model that type of collaborative approach. Relationships are resources and hoarding doesn't help anybody, not the people who are clinging to their resources and, and not the folks who want to do something for our students or for the university. And so, you know, the president's office is very leanly staffed. And we actually have the pleasure of several days a week having administrative assistants from other, un other units in Alkeld come and sit in our office be part of the president's office family, help greet and answer the phone. And it's been great. People would have thought, you know, how could you do this? But it's, it's been great all around. Um, I think people enjoy getting out of their offices. They're still doing the work for their offices while they're being part of our family. But um, it allows us to have a presence in the president's office. It allows people to move across the university in different ways. And um, it's really cut personnel costs for um, administrative support in, in the main building. That's a small example, but we have a small office. And I think that um, you know, one of the things we should all do more of is not just modeling the behavior, but providing ways to elevate those examples so other people can see what's worked and also what hasn't worked. You know, part of being um, innovative is taking risks and, and having things fail. And, you know, you can't be timid about making mistakes either. If you don't try something, you won't know if it works. And if you try something and it doesn't work, it gives you information about what to try next. I'm an experimentalist by training, so that comes very naturally to me, but it doesn't come naturally to everybody. And um, I, I think part of building organizational capacity for shared leadership is making people feel less timid and, and more bold about taking risks and trying new things, whether what they wanna try is about conserving resources or serving students or attracting faculty, those ideas should be surfaced and considered. So as much as I have so many other questions I could ask you, and it's always great to hear your perspective on so many of these important things, um, I want to be mindful of time as well. So um, in, my, in my new role, it's my plan to conduct stay interviews where employees are interviewed to find out why they choose to stay at NIU. So President Freeman, why do you stay at NIU? I could answer that question a couple different ways, and, and I may actually try to do that. I think I stay at NIU because of the people, but as much because of the potential and the fact that I think that already this is an exceptional university. And I could not mean that more from the bottom of my heart. It was about this time of year in 2009 when I interviewed here for the position of Vice President for Research and Graduate Studies. And the students I met in the Home Student Center when I was staying there, the faculty that I met on the search committee, the faculty and staff that I met through the interview process, I looked around and I saw so much here that made this the university for the future. Our students who were so talented and so ambitious and so committed to giving back. 
Our faculty and staff who didn't think that teaching undergraduates was an inconvenience, but rather a calling. And the fact that they knew that incorporating those students into the work they did outside the classroom was going to be transformational for their scholarship and for our students' lives. Not every university has faculty who think that way. And then the fact that we weren't a land grant institution, but we had a whole division that was committed to community engagement and collaborative partnerships. That was really amazing to me. And one of the things that kind of surprised me was I looked and I saw this and people were like, well, we're not that good or you know, I don't think that matters and, and we should be something else. And I was like, no, this is, this is all the secret sauce right here. And then when you add to that, the diversity of our student body and the equity lens that everyone here brings to work with them every day. We are the university for this century and the next century. And so one of the things I stay for is because every day I hope that there are more Huskies who share that viewpoint. But even more important than that, I want people across the state of Illinois and people across the country to share that viewpoint. And I get intermittent positive reinforcement. So, you know, the Illinois Board of Higher Education is making all the universities do equity plans. We did ours first, we were the model. The legislature passed a statute saying that all universities need to have undocumented student support offices. Sandy Lopez and our office was the model for that legislation. If you look at the national level, we eliminated standardized test scores from admissions and from merit-based financial aid before it was fashionable or forced by COVID. We did it because it was the right thing to do. And in terms of the way we advocate for our research mission as a high research activity university with a diverse student body, something that now the senators and representatives in Washington call an emerging research institution because Dr. Blasey and Dr. Quieter and people from NIU put that into the vocabulary and put it into legislation. When I walk around at a, a higher ed meeting, I can strut with pride because people think we're doing great things. And I'm the one who gets to strut with pride, but I'm not the one doing great things. I'm helping people here realize a shared vision and a shared vision that just makes us have endless potential, and that's why I stay. Well, thank you very much for sharing that and for all uh, that you shared with us today and just engaging in this conversation in general. Um, thank you to our audience attending here uh, in person as well as online. Uh, for those of you that are here in person, we welcome you to join us uh, for, for, for refreshments. Stick around and, and chat and have refreshments with each other. But um, just thank you again today for what you shared and for your leadership in general. Um, and of course, as always, go Huskies.